All right, hi students. It's nice to see you, even though I can't see you. I wish I could see you. Um, so I want to go over the argument chapter. And so it's chapter 15. So you're going to have to follow along in your book. So it's page 306. If you are using um, a previous edition, it is likely chapter 10 for you, and you'll just have to look at the page number, but not much has changed. So, uh, you know, that you can follow along with that version as well. So it says in the first part of the chapter, it says to, uh, to choose an appropriate topic. So by that, um, there are a couple things that, the, that they're talking about, but before um, we go into that, I wanted to point you to the, on page 322, I want to point you to the topics. So you are going to need to choose one of these topics for your essay. So it can't be anything other than these. So I'm going to go over these uh, with you right now. So again, we're on page 322. Um, in earlier versions, if you have an earlier version of the book, there are some uh, different, there are a couple topics that are different on that, that's fine. As long as it's from Steps to Writing Well, from the argument chapter, you can choose any of these topics. Notice that every one of the topics has a, um, has a should or a should not. So remember, this is an essay, you have to take a side. So you do need to have, you're arguing a point of view, you're not doing just a report on, on the pros and cons of both sides, you have to take a side. All right, so number one, it says students should or should not work throughout high school. So again, you're going to take a side on that. Uh, number two, driver's use of cell phones while vehicles are in motion should or should not be prohibited. A very timely issue. Um, so as I go through these, I'm going to tell you which ones uh, are usually fine to do without re research and just doing personal experience and which ones will need research. You don't have to do you make this paper into a research paper, but some of the topics by their very nature would require some research uh, just because of the facts that they would need to support it. So, but don't shy away from that. Do the one that you're the most interested in because that's likely to um, be the most, you know, it's gonna be more fun if you're interested in the topic and it will get you ready for the research paper in the end. All right, so, so you're working throughout high school, usually people can do that with personal experience. Um, you, cell phones and driving, you can usually do with personal experience, except that you should know the current law. So for example, you wouldn't want to say that there should be a law in California that you can't use your cell cell phone when driving because there is a law, so you would need to make sure that you know what the current law is. Other than that, you're probably okay with personal experience. Number three, a controversial ordinance in your hometown should or should not be repealed. So you would just need to find um, if there is some issue in Fairfield, Sassoon, Vacaville, you know, Vallejo, wherever you are, um, you would need to have a specific um, issue that you would like to work with. And uh, message me, contact me on that if you if you're, have one and you're not sure if it would work. All right, so number four, academically qualified children of un undocumented immigrants should or should not be allowed to apply for in-state tuition at public universities, should or should not, take a side. That requires research. It just needs some, some facts with that one. Five, uh, violent video games should or should not be available for purchase by anyone under age 18. Um, that one can probably be done by um, personal experience, but you do knew, need to know what the current law is. So number six, universities should or should not allow students or faculty to carry concealed handguns on campus. That needs some research. And number seven, a school voucher system should or should not be used in the state. What that is, is um, some folks think that they uh, should be able to have a subsidy to send their child to a private school um, because they're um, concerned about the, the public school that's in their area. Uh, some folks think that takes away from public schools. So that's the issue. Um, it would need some research. Number eight, students who do poorly in their academic courses should or should not be allowed to participate in athletic programs. Most, most folks can do that from their own experience. Number nine, all colleges should or should not adopt a smoke-free campus policy. You can probably do that from your own experience. Uh, number 10, the first two years of college should or should not be provided free of charge to all American citizens. Uh, would require a little research just to know what the history is, particularly the history in the state of California when we have had that in the past. 
Number 11, a plastic shopping bag should or should not be legally banned from grocery and other retail stores. Um, you can do that with your own experience. You just need to know the current law. Number 12, sodas and high sugar foods should or should not be sold in public school vending machines. I've had a lot of students work on that one very effectively, does not require research. 13, public school districts should or should not be allowed to sell advertising inside or outside of school buses. That might require just a little uh, research to understand the issue. 14, Americans should or should not be required to perform a year of public service or military service after high school graduation. Doesn't require research normally. Number 15, public school students should or should not be required to wear uniforms. I've had a lot of students uh, choose that one and they can you can do that with personal experience. Number 16, employers should or should not be allowed to require job applicants to take a personality test. That would not normally require research. Number 17, controversial names or symbols of athletic teams such as the Redskins, the Confederate flag, the Tomahawk shop should or should not be changed. I've had students do that one very effectively, usually doesn't require research. Uh, number 18, a law prohibiting demonstrations close to military or other funerals or some other controversial law, bill, or policy should or should not be passed probably requires research, anything with a law, bill, or policy. If you do want another law, bill, or policy, then, um, well, then and you're not sure if it would work, uh, just uh, contact me and ask. And then 19, individuals under age 20, uh, under age 14, I'm sorry, charged with felonies should or should not be tried as adults. Uh, that's, uh, I've had a lot of students work on that very effectively. It would require research, however. 20, we are not going to do. It's about advertising, and I think it's a little bit confusing. So if you have a real passion for number 20, contact me, but otherwise we're not going to do 20. All right, so we're gonna go back to the beginning of the chapter, so when it says, uh, choose an appropriate topic for one one requirement for this essay is you need to choose one of those topics in the book So it's we're not going to have anything other than the book if you write on a topic that is not in in one of the approved topics, uh, it's not going to count. You're not. You're going to have to redo it So to avoid getting a zero you, you've got to choose a topic from the book all right, so um, We're going to go to the next page where it says page 308 uh, explore the possibilities and your opinions. I would strongly suggest whatever topic you pick, even if you know what your opinion is, to make a pro and con sheet or something, some kind of a brainstorm to think what is your point of view, what is the opposite point of view. Really try to figure out where they're coming from. If you are unsure, if you're thinking, well, why would anyone oppose this? You could even use Google and just find out why are people opposing this and kind of really kind of get into where where they are at and coming from on this. That will enhance your essay because you'll be able to understand their point of view and perhaps address that, hopefully address that effectively. Um, and then it will inform your own writing. You'll have a better understanding uh, as you move forward. So, and then sometimes once we get more information, we might even change our minds and that's okay too until you turn it in. You've got to support your thesis. But so, so just explore that. Um, of what what both sides are, are on the issue. The next point it says anticipate opposing views. So as you're going through that process with the pro and con sheet, do know that there is someone that opposes your view. So you don't want to ignore that in the paper. You do need to address the opposition. I'm going to look for you to address the opposition both in your introduction and in the body of your paper, at least one major point of your opposition uh, should be addressed. So I'm gonna write that down because it's that important. So the opposition, um, at least one major point that they have, okay? So at least one major point of the opposition should be addressed in your paper, both, and I'm gonna put here, both in the intro and in the body of the paper, all right? So you don't want to uh, ignore it or, um, and, but on the other hand, you have to still support your thesis. So you don't want to argue for them either. You want to treat their concern as a legitimate concern, a valid concern, 
and you will seek to either address that concern or show why logically your view is more compelling for some reason. Uh, you don't want to argue for them, so you don't want to switch gears and say, okay, and now, uh, you know, a word from, <laughs> from this, this view. No, uh, but still, I'm going to put this down, but still support your thesis. All right, and again, you want to treat their concern as a legitimate concern. You're not going to call them names. You're not going to, um, you know, do anything like that. None of us think that we will do that, but sometimes we get very passionate, so that's understandable. But you, it can't show up in the paper. You, you've got to keep uh, uh, keep this as an intellectual exercise. It's it, our emotions can fuel our intellect in this regard, but it's an intellectual exercise. So you've got to just sort of keep that in mind when you're working with the opposing views. All right. So next it says know and remember your audience. So as we went back to chapter one, when we were going over audience, your audience is very, very important, but they're more important than ever to consider their needs in an argument paper because you're trying to convince them. You are trying to um, get them to understand your point of view and hopefully be convinced of your point of view. So you've got to understand what, what they know about the issue. So how does that relate to your paper specifically? In your introduction, you should explain the issue. Don't assume that they are completely aware of the issue or really understand it. Any of these issues, if you're working on it for your paper, you've probably been thinking about it more than the average person on the street. So you have got to explain it to them in the intro, right? So that's basically what that comes down to. Uh, in addition, any abbreviations, spell them out uh, the first time so that they understand what that's about and that sort of thing. All right, and I'm gonna go on to, it says, decide which point of the argument to include. So this is, once you make your pro and con list for both sides, then you know what side you're going to take, then you can jot down what side, uh, I mean, what, what side I'm am I gonna take, what points do I want to include? You might have several points, just pick maybe the three that you have the most to say about. So just kind of try to break it down. Uh, you, unless a couple can be combined. All right, uh, so let's do that. For I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to work with in the writer's workshop, which we'll also be doing by, uh, by in this video format. I'm going to take the issue of working while in high school because that has been uh, a topic that I've probably gotten the most papers on, so I think that that resonates. So I'm gonna work with that topic. So if you were working with that topic, you would want to make a pro and con sheet, right? Of, so let's put um, working. Uh, let's see, what well, benefits. Let's put benefits of working while in high school. Okay, and let's put problems with working during high school. All right, and so if, if you were here, I could like ask you <laughs> your ideas and that's what we normally do. But so just think, as, as I'm going through this, uh, kind of think, okay, what are some benefits and what are some problems associated with that activity? And I think just doing that will help you with your own topic to just kind of get in that mode. So some benefits of working, you would certainly have some spending money, which can be really helpful, right? So that, that could be a benefit. Um, certainly also along with having money to spend, you could save money. So for example, for um, you know, college or uh, a, you know, a big purchase, uh, maybe a car, something like that, right? For whatever uh, you wanna save money for, right? So that could be a, a benefit to working. I've had students say that they have been able to work in their field and have networking experience. Um, so that's a plus. I've had students talk about um, that it helps them to be more responsible, uh, having to be responsible for duties at work, having to arrive at a certain time. Um, that's different really than school. It's just kind of in a different format. So that might be, or, or um, time management. I've had a lot of students talk about the benefits of time management, of juggling school and work, that that teaches people time management. Uh, so those are just some, there are probably others. 
Um, so, and if you've thought of others, that's good, jot those down. So now we wanna look at some problems of, of working while in high school, the, the flip side, right? Uh, one thing that could occur is that you might miss out on some activities, right? Some special activities and um, events. For example, uh, when I was in high school, senior in high school, I was working at um, J.C. Penney's, and my um, I was really into going to the football games. And well, wouldn't you know that the game that we went to the state championship, I had to work, <laughs> so I I missed that one, right? So so um, that can happen. You could miss you know really special events like that. So then, um, in addition, you might miss uh, some opportunities. Um, for clubs and, you know, just and, and socializing and that sort of thing. So slightly similar, but slightly different. These would be like major events. This would be like on a regular ongoing basis where you don't really have time to be on the yearbook staff or be, you know, in play a sport or something like that because you are, you know, working. So, or just, you know, time to get together with friends, that sort of thing. Um, and then uh, also it can, I think probably the major argument for this side is grades, that it can affect one academically, that it can contribute to your grades going down. I think uh, in addition, I'm gonna try to make this exactly even if possible, um, that it could leave students feeling very stressed, right? Uh, trying to juggle work and school at the same time perhaps. Um, and that, that that could be a problem. And I'm gonna use this one too, when I had time management, I'm gonna put that one down that, that it could be a hindrance to time management because there are just perhaps too many things to manage, right? So, so again, there are others on both sides likely, but we're gonna just go with that for right now just to kind of get you um, into the mode. When we work, when I do work with the writer's workshop, we'll work more with this, but I wanted to give you an idea of it. In the book, it has um, an example of doing this for a model paper that they have on the, in the book, about arguing about a point about nutrition. So there, there says my side for the posting of nutritional information. And then if you flip the page to 310, it says my opposition side against the posting of nutritional information. So you can look at that in the book as a model. It's an excellent model and the paper is a really good paper too. If you have an earlier version of the book, it's about the sale of class notes, uh, meaning that if there was a professional person, a professional note taker that's an employee of a company sitting in on the class taking notes, and was, should that be allowed that, that that person could sell the notes to the students. So that's in the earlier version. So either one, they're very good. All right, so then it goes into on page 311, how to organize your essay. So there are many, many ways to do it, and I'm gonna do it yet a different one when we do the writer's workshop. But these are great, and one of the reasons I love this book is it's practical, it's like got a plan for you right there, and now more than ever, we, we need a plan right in front of us. So, um, so we're gonna look at these on page 311. So the first one, there's a pattern A. So it's right there uh, in the book, but I'm going to write it on the board as well. So pattern A, um, I'm gonna write that down, and that's one way to organize the essay, but again, it's not the only way. There are, there are several different ways to do this. So let's look at pattern A. So it says, first it says, number one is your intro and thesis, right? So you've gotta have body pair, I mean, your, your first paragraph is gonna be your introduction with your thesis, right? So then, next it says, Body paragraph one, you present your first point and its supporting evidence. So that's so then here we go. Here's your first point that you want to make, your first idea and your evidence. Don't forget your evidence. So your evidence is more important than ever. You can't normally convince anyone to a different point of view if you don't have any evidence. So it's okay if you pick one of the topics that you can do from personal experience to have that be, you know, give a personal example. Don't forget the example. Sometimes it's still in our heads, so you've got to remember to put that in. All right, so body paragraph two, you present your second point. This is pattern A, okay, pattern A. All right, so um, you present your second point, 
And then you have your evidence, okay? So that's next. And then with pattern A, the next one is body paragraph three, your opposition's first point. Opposition's first point. Okay, so this is a point that they have, right? And then it says opposition's first point, and then you refute it. And that is really key, refute the opposition's first point. Okay, so don't forget that you've got to refute their point. Again, you are not arguing for them. You're showing that you are aware uh, that there is this other uh, concern, right? But you've got to support your, your idea. All right, so then we go into body paragraph four. You refute your opposition's second point. So I'll just put it that way. Refute opposition's second point. Okay, and then it says you conclude. Okay, so in your conclusion, you need a full conclusion, full, full body paragraph, not full body paragraph, full concluding paragraph. Um, so that would, this would actually give you, um, it, this would give you six paragraphs doing it this way. So don't, don't hesitate to have an extra paragraph if it's done effectively, all right? Let's look at um, the pattern B. So pattern B is, is similar, but slightly different. You still have your intro and th thesis number one in the first paragraph, that's always. Number two, body paragraph one, you refute your opposition's first point. So sometimes you just wanna get started on refuting their point, right? So that is fine, you could do that. So let's just erase this. And instead, that this is now B, you want to refute opposition's first point, all right? So that's, that's fine, that kind of gets that out of the way. It says sometimes you may wish to clear away the opposition's claims before you present the arguments for your side, that's fine. All right, so body paragraph two, refute the opposition's second point. So refute opposition's Second point, okay, and then it says the third thing is you now present in body paragraph three, you present your first point and it's supporting evidence. So here we go, so, so body paragraph four, your first point and evidence. So when I'm, I wanted to make this clear too, when you're refuting the opposition, you still need evidence, all right? So I'm gonna just put that in, still need evidence, right? Need evidence uh, for your side. To refute them, you, you need evidence, right? So you're not having to build a, a whole thing of evidence for them, but, but for yourself, for your own point. All right, so let's look at then what it says next, body paragraph four, your second point and its evidence. All right, so here we go. Five is body paragraph for your, your second point. And evidence, okay, and then it says to conclude. So then, I'm gonna erase this. <laughs> All right, and then you would conclude. All right, so those are two ways to do that. We've got a pattern A, we've got a pattern B, and yes, there's a pattern C. So we'll go over C. All right, so C is gonna be um, slightly different. C, but it has intro and thesis in paragraph one. Then body paragraph one, you present your first point and it's supporting evidence, which also refutes one of your opposition's claim. So that's really cool when it can work that way. You've got your topic sentence, your idea, but you are specifically dealing with the opposition in the same paragraph. That is really cool when it works that way. So let's put that, you present your first point. Okay, so your, your first point and evidence which also supports, which, which also refutes the opposition. 
All right, and then under C it says, the next one in C is you're presenting your second point and it's supporting evidence, which also refutes a second opposition claim. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so then your second point and evidence also refutes opposing point. This is where that pro and con list comes in really handy because you'll know what their points are, right? Um, and then body paragraph three, you present a third point and it's supporting evidence, which also refutes a third opposition claim. So here we go. So now uh, your third point and evidence and also refutes an opposing point. Okay, so, so, and again, you're not doing that by happenstance, you are specifically addressing their concern. You, may, you might state it like, some may argue that, you're not arguing that, but some may argue that whatever it is and explain how you're refuting that. All right, very good, so we've gone through Patterns A, B, and C, there is also a combination pattern, which is at the bottom of page 312. For that one, we've got our intro and thesis, that is the same. And then the difference is, it says body paragraph one, it starts a point for your side. So point for your side. Okay, so we've got the point for your side, body paragraph two, one of your points, which also refutes an opposition claim. Okay, so I'm gonna put your point and also refutes the opposition. Okay, and then we've got Body paragraph three, you refute another opposition claim. Okay, so you refute another opposition claim while having your own topic sentence, right? And I'm gonna just continue to put down that you do need the evidence, don't forget that, in all of them. And then last, in this one, you conclude, right? Some topics just lend themselves to different patterns and also it depends on, on how you craft the paper. Um, but there are lots of good choices, so those are some, there still are others, and I'm gonna use a different one in the writer's workshop as well. All right, so on the bottom of page 313, it, it says to argue your ideas logically. I do have a handout on logical fallacies that I'm going to try to post, um, that it basically talks about arguing your ideas with evidence and logic, uh, no name calling, as I mentioned before, and I know most of us, we wouldn't want to do that, but sometimes we just get really passionate and it's like, how could anyone take this stupid view? No, like you, you just want to, to think of your, your opponent as a reasonable person who is an intelligent person, they have a different idea, all right? So you just want to give that experience in the book here in this, in this uh, chapter, she talks about having a let us reason this together spirit, and, and you want to have that spirit. All right, so I want to go over 315, uh, top of page 315, it says offer evidence that effectively supports your claims. So these are some types of evidence that you could use and so I want to talk about that. The first one says personal experience. Yes, you can, for this paper, use personal experience. It's totally fine to use personal experience in this paper. Just don't forget to put it in. Sometimes we, we explain it, but we don't give the little story. So if you had a little story where you experienced this working in high school, for an example, put it in. Uh, don't, don't feel like I gave you the little example, right, of, of missing that, that big football game because I was at JCPenney's, right? So give, give that, uh, give the story, right? So personal experience. All right, so personal experience, that is one that is fine. Um, and then it says the experience or testimony of others whose opinions are pertinent to the topic. So that is, you can do that. So an authority on the subject. I'm gonna say, so uh, personal, experience of others who are either, they're either an authority on the subject 
or um, or they're somehow their opinion their opinion um, is is um, I don't know like they, they're an expert I'm gonna phrase it that way they're an authority or an expert so this might be a professor that did a study on the topic or something like that all right so again personal experience is fine just put in the example uh, personal experience could be of others or you know they might have facts or something it says the experiences or testimony of others whose opinions are pertinent this is like an authority if you're dealing with the nutritional information um, on a vending machine snacks quoting someone that is a nutritionist a dietitian a doctor that's going to be uh, someone who's their opinion really matters because they have expertise or education in that field. You don't want to put for this random people. Everybody has an opinion, but not everybody's opinion belongs in your paper. I'll give you an example of that. I was working with a student um, who at the writing center, in, in at, uh, this was at Napa Valley College, and she was working on a paper. I can't, it had something to do with education, and she was working on her paper at Starbucks. Don't we wish we could do that right now? <laughs> um, so there was a lady sitting near her who was interested in the topic, and they got to talking, and she was um, said, oh, when I was in school, which was, you know, 30 years previously or something, that all the students were so motivated. Everybody did all the reading. Nobody was, you know, had bad attendance. I mean, it was just so much better. And so she took notes on everything this lady said and she put it in her paper but the thing is is that she, this this lady was well-intentioned and the student was very well-intentioned but she wasn't an expert in the education field so um, telling you that having been a student 30 years ago no not everybody did all the reading <laughs> not and people people miss class and did all the things people do today so um, if there is an educational trend or an experience or cultural trend and there's a an official study on that for example study that was done at UC Davis habits of students something like that fine yes you can use that study but random people, as nice as they are, you can't. You can listen politely, but they can't go in your paper. Okay. All right. Very good. So let's move on to, and then the next um, part of evidence: facts. You can use facts from research. So facts from research. Again, this does not have to be a research paper, but if the topic that is most interesting to you is one that requires research, I wouldn't shy away from it. I would, I would jump at the opportunity because it's going to help you with the research paper, um, and it just you're just going to be more engaged if you're interested in the topic. So facts from research. Use the databases from Solano from, that you've been learning about in the LR10 class. Those are always going to be good sources. Um, you can really any reputable publication if the New York Times or the Wall Street Journal or the San Francisco Chronicle anything like that you just want to stay away from like somebody's blog um, because unless again they're that um, you know they're uh, an official uh, person with that expertise and it's really hard to ascertain that from the blog so I would stay away from that sort of thing all right, so then it says statistics, again, from reliable sources. So again, you could research some statistics. Um, I can, why can I not spell, spell statistics right now? <laughs> statistics uh, from reliable sources, which we just talked about. So you can do that. You want to, I'm going to say what some things to avoid on reliable sources. You want to use college academic sources. So, for example, you want to stay away from sources like I've seen, like um, Homework Help 123, uh, Teen Inc. is another one that I've seen. Um, these are, they tend to be um, just very general and they're, they're, they're not what you want to use for a college paper. Wikipedia, we're, we all use it to check things, but you want to find a source that's something other than Wikipedia. It's just, it's able to be changed and it's, it's hard to be able to verify it for that reason. All right, so, and then hypothetical examples. I'm gonna write that down with a, with a, a little caveat about that. So hypothetical examples. So a hypothetical example is it we, you don't know for sure that it happened. I mean it didn't happen to you, but but it could happen. It theoretically could happen. That's fine. 
Um, it's better to have actual evidence, but sometimes we do need to use a hypothetical example. I will take up to one per paper, no more than one hypothetical example per paper. It would be much better to have a personal example or actual facts, but I'll take one, no more than, one hypothetical example per paper, okay? I think when we use more than one, it just starts getting away from us because then we start not having any, any actual evidence. All right, so again, testimony from authorities and experts, that's very similar to what we talked about. Um, it now says charts, graphs, or diagrams. Um, you could put that in, but you really need, this is an essay, so it really needs to be in, in for your evidence. You could include that in addition to, but you need to have evidence uh, in, in words as well. All right, so and then it says next, page 315, find the appropriate uh, tone. And again, I mentioned this before, but I, it's really important, so I'm gonna go through it now again. It says sometimes when we argue, it's easy to get carried away. So it totally is, right? There's something I read that said that nobody ever changed their mind by being yelled at. <laughs> and I think that's true in writing too. And, and the reader will get if you're talking down to them or if you're just so angry that, that uh, you've taken leave of your senses. So instead of taking that approach, uh, it says, remember that your goal is to persuade and perhaps change your readers' minds, but not alienate them. So again, you want to treat them as if they are a reasonably intelligent person. They may have a different view. They may be unaware of the issue. Um, but again, take this sort of let us reason together sort of approach, right? They're not your enemy. All right, so let's go into, it's my, some things are falling here. I, I'm going to skip over. Two. I'm going to skip a couple of pages. We already talked about the essay topic. So I'm going to skip to a topic proposal for your essay. So uh, again, I believe I posted on Canvas that this is actually due this Wednesday. Uh, the topic proposal, your essay is due um, off the top of my head on the 15th, and I'm going to uh, check the date that I put on, on Canvas here. But, but the topic proposal for the essay is on page 323. Every single version of the book, even if you're using an earlier version, has the topic proposal for the essay. You just have a different page number. All right, but I'm gonna go through it. It says selecting the right subject matter is important to every writer. So to help you clarify your ideas and strengthen your commitment to your topic, here is a proposal sheet that asks you to describe some of your preliminary ideas about your subject before you begin drafting. So this is the same format we've used with other topic proposals. Um, you're going to answer the questions. You do not have to type out the questions. I have them. But if it helps you to keep on track, sometimes students like to type them out because it just keeps them on track. That's fine, but you don't have to. But I do need it in complete sentences. So yes, everything has to be um, submitted online now, so I will create an assignment for that, and you'll submit it that way. All right, so it says, number one, what is the subject of your argumentative essay? Write a rough draft of your opinion on this subject. Again, pick one of the topics on, the, on page 322. That's your subject. What is your idea about it? That's going to turn into your thesis. Number two, why are you interested in this topic? Is it important to you for your personal, civic, or professional life? State at least one reason for your choice of the topic. So, this is going to help you to really get formulate your idea and really get clear on it. So personal is just you're interested in this. It doesn't have to be any other reason. You're just interested, right? Or unless it affects you, it's something that you like to do or something like that. Civic as a citizen, uh, professional is it could be something that you do for work right now, or it could be what you want to do for work or your major, something like that. So at least one reason for your choice. Number three, is this a significant topic of interest to others? Why? Is there a particular audience that you would like to address? So I do need you to address who your audience is. So again, anyone could benefit from reading your, your paper and getting more information on the topic, but I want you to think of a particular demographic. So again, it doesn't have to be a certain person, but maybe, um, you know, parents of teenagers or, or, or uh, teachers or, um, you know, some, some senior citizens, you know, whatever it is, like a particular demographic that might be really able to 
um, get the most out of your paper. College students is another example. All right, so number four, it says, at this point, can you list at least two reasons that support your opinion of your topic? So do list two reasons. These reasons will really help you with your topic sentences. This is gonna help you develop those points that we talked about earlier. Number five, who opposes your opinion? So, and I don't mean like a person, my next door neighbor opposes my opinion, no. I mean, but but who in, in general, like who are they? What What's the demographic perhaps if you know that? or just state like what their concerns are. And then it says, can you state clearly at least one of your opposition's major criticisms of your position, all right? What uh, difficulties, if any, might arise during drafting? For example, might you need to collect any additional evidence through reading, research, or interviewing to select, support your points, or refute your opposition? So whatever difficulties, if you do need research, that might be considered to be a difficulty. Or um, if, if you've never written a paper of this type, that could be a difficulty, right? Dealing with this online could be a difficulty, right? Anything like that. If you don't anticipate difficulties, that's fine, but say why. I've already done um, a paper on this topic previously, so I feel comfortable with the topic or something like that would, would be effective. All right, I'm gonna point you to a sample student essay in the book on page 324. There's one that says better information equals healthier eating. And so that's a sa sample um, essay. They have a nice, it's uh, also a nice work cited page. It has nice MLA style, so that's a great one to look at. Any version of the book has a sample essay, and they're all well worth uh, looking at. All right, thank you. I want, I'm glad that we were able to go through the, the chapter in this way. And, of course, if you have, have questions about it, do ask. Thank you so much.